Hey guys, Gameboy3800 here once again, and today, well this is my PC I've been building for the past month or so now, maybe a month and a half or two months now, but yeah, this is it, DVD drive, you have USB ports and stuff under here, power reset, I put that sticker on myself, I feel so proud. You got a Corsair H50 liquid cooling thing there. You have a blue LED fan here. Corsair CX600 watt power supply. Wireless internet. Firewire and USB 2.0 ports. GTX 650 accelerate 250. Um, it's not 250, what? Um, 2 gigabyte edition. For USB 2.0, 2 3.0, and two more 2.0. That's 12 USB ports total. And there's nothing on the back. It's got a 3.3 gigahertz, um, six core AMD FX 6100 processor unlocked. And this case is gonna be scrapped because it's too boring and too small. So, that's what the big box back there is, a new case. I don't have much hard drive space left on this camcorder, so I'll just get straight to the cut of it out of the box. Okay, here it is. One from what I can gather, it's got um, fan speed control, power reset, under these little things are USB things, I'll get those off later. like they're actually into things. Yeah, they are. Ooh, blue. Looks like they're USB 3.0s. Lucky me. But yeah, fan speed controls. Yeah. Rad line. Okay. And you have two red fans in here. You can't see them at all. But believe me, they're in there. You have a nice big side window here with plastic on the inside. On the top here, you have two more big red fans. You can kind of see that. And on the back, you have one more fan. And lots of PCM and PCI cards. You have a spot for a bottom fan. I'm not entirely sure why, but it's there. Um, and finally, you have a spot down here for a power supply. That's the rundown of the case. I guess now I'm gonna have to show you how to take out your old junk and put in the new junk. So, yep. This little vent there to let some air in and out. Okay, let's get started. Okay, first off, Take off your old case thing here. For me, I'm going to be removing these two screws that hold in the Corsair H50 uh, water cooling unit. Have the screws in a slightly organized pile. being stubborn and there we go I have a 120 millimeter to 80 millimeter uh, thing on the power supply I'm going to unplug the pump and fan the pump as soon as I unscrew it a little bit will be the first thing to come out. As soon as I put on my new 
um, grounding wire thing. I just decided to get one. You really should have one. I just waited till now because I'm lazy and cheap. I got this thing at Intrex um, computer parts and stuff. It didn't have much things up to date though, so I don't know. Share what you will. And then just simply hook it up to something so that you can ground yourself and not shock the thing to pieces. There, done. It's in the way though. Done again. Take a screwdriver, unscrew it. For me, with the course here, you unscrew the thing just a little bit. So it's got some play. Lift it up and give it a twist. And here comes the water cooling unit. We'll leave that over there where it won't get all over the rug. There. Um, heat sink. And Ar Arctic Silver 5 cooling paste. Now I'm just um, removing the rest of the mount. So it'll be ready to go into the new case. Almost got it. As for now, I'm actually going to be removing the 8 gigabytes of memory that I have installed on this unit. Simple thing, just unhook all the RAM cards and pull them all out. Whether you do it one at a time or all at once like I did, doesn't matter. Next we're going to be removing the PCI cards that you may have installed. All cases will be different, all motherboards will be different, all video cards will be different, and all PCI cards will be different. So don't complain if this doesn't work. I have a little cover on mine. I'm just unscrewing all the PCI cards. If you have a GPU that takes enough power, unplug it from the power supply and just unplug all the express cards one by one. This video card will be replaced. I'm not going to be using this card anymore. Don't forget the switch in the back that holds it in so you could actually remove it. If it's a little bit in have a pain, that's okay. That means it was in there good and tight. If it's too much of a pain, I'm sorry. Wow. Okay, let's skip that for a minute. Next, I'm gonna be removing your hard drive or hard drives. Let me move the camera down. Unhook them from their SATA connection. Oh, that's proving really difficult. Why? Okay, power connection first. For the fan, on the back I actually have it connected to the power supply. Disconnect the fan. Oh, that's a real pain. 
Okay, next up, for me at least, we have some connections well, up here. You can't see that, but we have some connections up here. Um, this gives power to the CPU. Find out how awkward that is to remove. And then hopefully remove it as usual as that. There's one more over here. Came right out. And technically, you are ready to remove your power supply at this point. There we go. This is the video card that I was using before. 2 gigabyte um, 650 Accelerate Edition. Not entirely sure what it means, but it was 2 gigabytes. So pretty good for gaming or video rendering. That's what I was mainly using it for. Just connect your um, disk drive. Give a second attempt on the hard drive. There we go. Little button on the top apparently does it. For me, my hard drives are two different sizes. Same capacity, but physical size is different. One's older, one's newer. So it's easy to remember which one is which. But if you have multiple hard drives, just remember which one is the boot drive. And if you can't remember, just make sure it's in the right boot order through the BIOS. I'm sorry, you couldn't see a part of that at all. One. Here it is, it's a Seagate 7200 RPM drive, and this here is a Max Tor, another two, 250 gigabyte drive, but I believe it's a 5400 RPM, more for backup than use. Disconnect the SATA cables from the motherboard. I don't know if the button here should be 1% easier to remove. Okay, there's 2% easier, and that came right out. Okay, see the cables removed. All cables removed except for the front panel board. Came right out. Came right out. And all 32 of those came out just fine. Okay, so right now we are I'm ready to remove the motherboard. So with this motherboard, I'm going to take several screws at the bottom. I'm going to move the camera over so you can see what's in it or lack thereof. There's a screw here. A screw here, you can't see that. A screw hiding here, you can't see that. A screw here, you could probably see that. No, you couldn't, my hand was in the way. I do apologize. Let's, let's zoom out some. You have two more screws up here. Let's start from the top. Mighty tight fit in there because of the fan. But that's the only tight fit we have. And thanks to our magnetic screwdriver, it'll come right out. Just realize you really don't need to remove the Corsair thing from the board because the whole thing's going to be coming out anyways. But I guess for safety's sake, you could do it. But I only have 15 minutes of hard drive space left, so I'll cut to the chase of when we um, get this board out and we're ready to put it in. We're just about to get this board out actually, so I guess I'll record for another minute.
on to the last screws. Thankfully, this is a very magnetic screwdriver. As you could probably tell there. And that's the last of that. So I'm going to get as much of this out of the way as I can. This drive actually still needs to be removed up here. So for me it's just four screws. You might have two or six or a hundred. I'm sorry if my arm gets in the way. If you are at all offended by any of this, please call 1-800. I don't give a crap. Thank you, Magnetism. How's it going? This drive out. Okay, and now our motherboard should be very good and loose. And it popped right out. I'm just double checking to make sure nothing clings to it for life. And with my luck, something will. And it was the CPU extra power. And there you go. We have removed our motherboard. I'll see you in the next part or where we put it into the new case. See you then. And there we go. This case is now completely hollow and light as a feather. Where'd they put? Okay, now for the new case, a little bit heavier and not light at all. Uh, that's all for the fans and stuff. Okay, so we have a lot to cover. So, I'll just tell you the steps I'm going to do first. Power supply, motherboard, the things are already in, they're very nice. Um, PCI cards, after connecting the um, water cooling unit. And then all the drives, and from the looks of it, it's a swap, hot swap style drive where you just pick it up and let it out. Stuff like that, I don't know. So, yeah. Okay, we got our motherboard in, we got the power supply in, and I added an extra fan on the bottom. That fan is from the Corsair H50 liquid cooling thing. And yes, we're going to um, add everything back in part, um, piece by piece. I guess the first and easiest thing to add would be the disk drive. There we go, just pop that thing out. Shove this thing in. And this has little screws that go right in. And it shouldn't be too much of a hassle. And there we go, crisis averted. I have nine minutes of hard drive space left. Fantastic. I guess I'll skip to when I get the video card in. 
and then skip to the memory, and then skip to the hard drive, and then skip to the um, liquid cooling unit. So, see you each jump cut. Alright, this is a new video card. This is the award winning, I guess you could say, NVIDIA GeForce GTX 660 Ti. Same amount of memory, but it's faster and bigger. And bigger is always better, so yay. Don't even need scissors, yay. Again, make sure you're grounded. Like I am. Let's see. SLI capable, yep. And I'm going to fit this into the first GPU socket. Wherever that goes in. Make sure it's lined up. Now this is an SLI card. It can go into SLI. So you got that. Although this will need two power connections, so make sure you got that. With the Corsair H uh, H CX six hundred power supply, you got it. Power supply one. Power supply two. Yay. I am essentially a god. This is a G Force GTX, just like everyone else needs. Hmm, I'm apparently blocking one of my shaded ports down there, but whatever. There's still one open, and I was only using three to begin with, so we're pretty much good to go. Um, next is memory. I'll get to you on that. Point, point. That went, went in quite easily. Next up. The hard drives are in place. They're at the top here, so you can see them easy. Next up. I guess it's the Corsair liquid cooling unit. See you then. And liquid cooling unit is in place, connected to this fan right here. Alright, next up, just connecting all the drives. Okay, we are just about done. I needed a little bit of boost, so got a monster. Just finishing up the drive connection and we will be good. Okay, I finally got everything hooked up, except for the USB 3.0 thing for the top panel. It doesn't have the connection on the motherboard. Sad. I guess I'll just get a PCI. Express extension or something. But for now, it's just going to kind of lie down here. We have a lot of wires and all that good stuff. But I guess the moment is finally here to test out, test it out. And yay! Bottom fans working, rear fans working, top fans are working, front fans are working. And I wanted to know if this would be sucking in or blowing out. Yay! They're all working. I got the old mini blue fan. I'm running there. And the GPU fan. Running good. So that's that. All the drives are connected. The only thing I have to do now is put the side panels back on, which will take all but three seconds. Assuming you know which way they go. Apparently, I don't. Well, that's it for me. I got the spotlight out so that I could see where the front board connections go because those are always a pain. Well, till next time, I have five minutes of hard drive space left. Hoorah. Bye.